Welcome to another episode of Plastic Surgery Uncensored with Dr. Roddy Raban, board certified plastic surgeon right here in Beverly Hills. I'm his co-hostess, Monique Marvez, and today's guest, we're going to say it, Haley Greenberg. Now you have her whole handle. Send you can it. find her because <laughs> she is a prominent social media producer, content creator, and dare I say shapeshifter? Can yeah. I put that in there? Shape I'm going to say For it, sure. shapeshifter. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Plastic Surgery Uncensored with Dr. Roddy Raban, board certified plastic surgeon right here in Beverly Hills. We're uh, doing this today and I'm Monique Marvez, his co-hostess and our guest, Haley Greenberg. Hey everyone, I'm happy hey. to be here. We're using last names. So Haley is a very prominent social media um, uh, producer, content creator, manager, et cetera, and we're happy to have you here. This is uh, a really important topic because obviously, as everyone knows, social media is, um, I think it's just taken over the world. I mean, my mom and dad are 80 and they're on social media. So that just tells you that it's now, it's, it's, it's ubiquitous. It isn't just millennials or kids anymore. No, it's no. taken over everybody. And the reality is that there is no reality. And the reason why I'm so happy to have you here today is because, you know, the purpose of the whole podcast is to constantly create transparency and no place more than social media is transparency not present and people are misled and there's deception and in plastic surgery it's at the top of the rung uh, whether that be from physicians and their before and after photos whether that be from likes and views whether that be from influencers whether that be from and the whole thing is, in my personal opinion, majority of it is a lie. And so what's really great, and we're so happy to have you because um, we want to know, I want people to hear from the inside. You know, we all look from the outside, but you're the, you know, the magic tricks. And so when you're the magician, um, it, it changes your view of the magic, so to speak. And so um, we're really excited to have you. And we're going to, we're going to start to pick your brain a little bit as far as, um, what people, aside from getting, aside from finding out what's, what, what really is going on behind the scenes, I'm really, I'm really, I hope that you'll be able to give some of our listeners an understanding of how to decipher some of it. Some of it you'll never be able to because it's so sophisticated. Yeah. And especially with the new algorithm that's happening and everyone's reach on Instagram is plummeting. So it's much harder actually now to decipher whose likes are real because everyone across the board, their engagement rate has dropped from like 4% to 1% now. So it's much harder to tell. Um, is but she I, still speaking English? Yeah, yeah so no. I was going <laughs> to... So we'll back up here. We're gonna, we have to start out with a glossary. Okay. So first and foremost, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got into this okay. and what you were doing and what you're what you were doing then and what you're doing now. Okay. Why don't you tell us a little bit? So that? basically, I graduated from University of Arizona in 2012. I moved straight to L.A. I got a job in fashion. Um, I was doing the whole nine to five thing. Uh, Instagram just started to become a thing. And I was like not feeling a nine to five. I just had so much creative juice in me. And I just started playing around with Instagram and kind of learning the tricks and the traits. And basically, simultaneously, my brother was in dental school and he was on his way to be a dentist. He was completely miserable. And he started doing yoga and dabbling in psychedelics and just kind of <laughs> expanding his mind and philosophy, whatever. And he ended up becoming a dentist for two years. But in the course of that period, he started a page on Facebook called Sun Gazing. And it was all about positivity, spirituality, whatever. It started from 100 followers to thousands. Today, it's at 15 million followers. And so around that time, I was like, okay, I'm going to create the Instagram page for Sun Gazing. And I have all this, you know, I, I majored in psychology in college. So there's so much that I feel I can put out there in quotes and memes, whatever, to just spread positive ideas and just to to help people know that they're not alone because pretty much everyone is suffering at the end of the day of course so and that's kind of like the thing is just knowing on instagram that everyone is suffering what you're seeing isn't real mm -hmm. and i would say 90 percent of it maybe even higher 99 percent everyone 
has an internal struggle. So what they're putting out there are manipulated images. You're just seeing their highlight reel, but behind the scenes, you don't know what's going on in their life. And I firsthand am an example of it because you look at my Instagram, I'm traveling. It looks like my life is amazing, but I have an anxiety disorder. I deal with low grade depression my whole life. And, you know, if I'm experiencing it, experiencing this then i know a lot of other people are as well right so you start so so you started with the so you started with the sun gazing and then then you started you slowly became very good and by good i mean professional at the instagram game and then you started acquiring accounts and you sort of started to stumble into the aesthetic world right yes so basically i started getting clients by word of mouth and i started understanding the whole systematic kind of numbers approach to uh, Instagram and meaning that like I started learning how to grow accounts organically and it was really tedious. It took me about 10 hours a day and basically it was this whole follow unfollow technique where I would go to pages that were similar to the brand that I was doing social for. So let's say it was um, a vegan page. I would go to other vegan pages, go to their recent photo that they posted and just follow all the people that liked that picture. So I know that they're real people that will engage with photos and see who will follow back. And at that time, I was able to grow my clients about 5,000 followers a month. So let me, wow. let, me let, let me describe for the average person so they're listening. So Because most people are not going to f- understand this unless they have a business. But yeah. the idea is that you're an average person, you go look at an account, and immediately the first thing you look at is how many followers they mm-hmm. have. And then you look at their average post. And if it's a picture, you want to know how many likes they have. Yes. And if it's a video, you want to see how many views they have. Mm-hmm. So if you're a business, a vegan restaurant, you want your page to give the impression that you have lots of followers and that your photos get lots of likes and your videos get lots of views. So you hire a marketing specialists like yourself. Mm. And what you were doing was essentially what's called growth hacking. You were growing their page, getting them people to come to their page and, and look people at people that it. was in line with their demographic. It wasn't like I was getting people from like Dubai and the Middle East. Right. It was like California, New York women. And depending on which brand it was, I've worked with so many different brands, musicians, doctors, whatever, you name it, in the last eight years. So it was. It just depends on the account. But in addition to that, what, what initially drew me to social media was the creative aspect, which is what it was created for, was photography. And I'm a very creative person. So that's what I loved about it in the beginning. And then kind of through the years, it like ripped my soul out, just so- everything that went through. Rude. So let's let's talk about that soul ripping experience. Yeah. And that's the reason why we're having you here today because it's kind of like you're a reborn junkie. What happened mm-hmm. is that you know you went in with one idea and the process did its number on you, and now you've come out of the other side a different person. Mm-hmm. And so um, I think let's talk about, for example, because obviously for our listeners, they're they're tuning in because they're interested in knowing about the the transparency of plastic surgery. So yeah. I know you took care of some plastic surgery accounts. Yes. And I think in taking care of those accounts, it was some of what made it very disenchanting for you because you slowly found yourself kind of knee deep in quicksand. So can you elaborate to us when you were managing those accounts, what those was like? Yeah, so I've I've worked with a couple of plastic surgeon accounts. And the first one I worked with, which was I feel like five years ago, and I worked on his account for two years. I ended up getting him up to 80,000 followers. Wow. He was only in practice, I don't even know how long, maybe a couple of years. So I'll stop there for a second. I'm okay. going to keep interrupting you because I'm trying to point out yeah. that. That's a lot of followers. So, yeah. so, so the, and again, I'm going to, I, I, I want to bring highlight to these things. So you're an average person, you're a young girl or a young guy, and you want to get your nose done or your breast done, and you go onto a page and you uh, um, automatically correlate number of followers to experience and skill. And so what, what, what Haley just said is why that is a terrible, terrible thing to do, which means you have a guy who recently graduated, his training doesn't make him bad, doesn't make him good, just, just makes him realistically very young in his training. And yet he has already, because of the help of someone like you, 80,000 followers, yes. real or not real is irrelevant, but they're 
But but the point I'm making is that would make you think that that person is super well oh, yeah. experienced. So keep going. So basically, he didn't really have a, a large gallery on his website. I would recycle probably the same 10 to 15 before and afters for two years. And then basically, the aesthetic of the page was his before and after, which this will shock everyone. I would manipulate the after photos on Facetune. And so he would have the before breast dog and the after was so bad in my opinion that I would have to go in as like a social surgeon and retouch the boobs or if there was a tummy tuck, I would have to pinch it in or completely smooth this. It, there was so much that had so, to be done to the so after So we have to pictures. stop here because this is probably of, of all of the episodes we've had. This is had, mind blowing. Right. So of all the episodes we've had, I think this is one of the most valuable pieces of information that has come through this microphone. That the fact is that the image that you are looking at on Instagram or social media, forget about whether it's a girl in a bikini or a car, or whatever, the after photos of surgeries that you are using to determine whether or not you like this guy or not like this guy or want to undergo the surgery are often doctored and manipulated. Yes. And so two things you mentioned was once that the photos are recycled, which you goes to show you that why you need to still go back to the organic way of looking at people's websites. Mm -hmm. I have patients who say, does Dr. Urban have any photos on his, uh, on, on, does, does he have a lot of photos of breast dogs in my office? Manager's like, what are you talking about? He's got like 200 photos. He's like, well, I don't see that many on Instagram. She's like, Instagram? What are you talking about? He's got like a 200 page website yeah so you got to go back to the website not that those photos can be doctored but you can see the breadth of a surgeon's work exactly. like you can see like he has 12 breast dogs fine he has 200 breast dogs and the other and much more disturbing entity is that the photos are not real yes they're not real and so it was a mix of me altering his photos then simultaneously every other post would be a sun gazing quote so all these women that I was grabbing from the LA area, they were thinking he was this like spiritual, incredibly wise guru. And they were like, I was basically his pimp at this point. Like the DMs that were coming through were insane. Amazing. Amazing. This, so so everyone has to everyone has to appreciate your willingness to come here and share your- This is like your, the blacklist. Well, this- oh, well, it was, <laughs> we're, we're Some not, of the messages like- we're, we're not rated. We're never going to talk about who people are, but we are going to talk about the concepts because mm -hmm. this does not apply to this individual. This applies to many individuals, yeah. whether that's your doctor, which is very disturbing, or your favorite actor or your favorite musician. They have individuals like Haley, all of them, every one of them. I don't. I don't. Every, I do it all myself. That's ev why it's ev terrible. Every one of them <laughs> have individuals to a certain degree that run and or uh, create the image of that person mm -hmm. or the persona they want to be, okay? So what you're saying essentially, and I think it's really important, is the person you are following often, not always, I think if you know, if you do enough homework, like if you went to our my Instagram, for example, and you're like, oh, okay, whatever. And then you went to my YouTube and then you went to my podcast and then you went to my website, you would be able to create a cohesive story that says, yes, that's that guy. Mm -hmm. But if you just go to an Instagram and then are blind to everything else, and that Instagram is a alternative universe to that person's persona, you may actually get catfished. Yes. To thinking that your doctor is really skilled, super personable, and really lovely. Cool, deep, caring, oh, good, yeah. good at his job. Yeah, exactly. And do you think there should be legislation that before and after pictures have to say if they're retouched or unretouched? Well, we'll get to that in a second. I think that's a great, we're going to put that for a second half. Yeah. Okay. I want to know about Haley's spiral and her resurrection of to of course i'd to, be depressed too if i was lying to the masses well yeah. no offense oh but I'm sure and you're you know what now. no i didn't even care that i was lying to the masses at that point i was just trying to earn a living and he was paying me good money and i was just doing my job and i had you know six other accounts that i was working on and he just happened to be a really easy account for me because he didn't really care he was getting all the girls and i i felt like that was like my purpose for his page was just to bring in the dates. Okay, so then you did that for a while, and then what happened? So tell me a little bit about the so how things started to keep going. <laughs> so then, essentially, what happened was it got to the point where I was like, "Do you have any more before and afters?" This is like two years, two and a half years in, and 
he was like, I'm thinking about maybe stopping plastic surgery. Like I, I've gone into these other real estate ventures, whatever. But majority of the new images I was getting were transgender patients. And even posting that, it was just like, I, I it wasn't the demographic anymore. And I, I, I just didn't feel good about it. And I just felt like we should part ways at that point. Okay. And also I had a new client that was interested in using me. So I was like, okay, that'll replace the money for him. And okay. that's kind of where my mind was at. Um, and then a couple years later, um, I ended up getting a couple other plastic surgeons. And at that point I was only taking on, I'd been doing it for eight years. And I was just like, I'm going to be selective with who I'm taking on as a client. I actually have to believe in who I'm working with in order to do their account. And, and not just plastic surgeons, but believe in brands because there's not much I can do if your product sucks or if your plastic surgery sucks. There's not much I can do on my end, especially at this point in the game of Instagram where they have limited what you can do in terms of how many likes you can get, how many followers you can get in a month. So... That's kind of where I'm So at. the evolution of it was that you started this process as a young girl trying, mm -hmm. you know, with the creative. Like 22 years old. Yeah, you were 22. You were creative. You got into Instagram. And as you started to get the hang of it because you knew how, because it is a numbers game and there is an algorithm mm -hmm. and there is a coding behind the images that you see. There's a scaffolding behind all of it. As you got better and better at it and you grew, you found yourself maybe getting dark into, into a darker environment as far as the accounts that were a, a it was the accounts it was also just being on instagram all day that was starting to have negative side effects for me it started as the initial in 2014 where everyone was like you know instagram really blew up and it was the whole fomo thing comparing your appearance to you know the influencers so that i started so interestingly what and does i'm sorry FOMO to stand for fear of missing fear out. of missing out so interesting, in it's a very true entity, by the way. I suffer from I it. I actually have Jomo, joy of missing out at yeah, this point. Uh, I, oh, that's I, hilarious. I, I, have, I have it, and I'll t my wife makes fun of me, but I do have that, and I'll tell you a little about it later. But that's I think it's hilarious. really, this is really fascinating. People, you, because you're on the back end, mm -hmm. you're seeing the reality that this is not reality. Yet because Instagram is so powerful, Instagram is nothing more than just a collection of images. Because seeing people's images and you knowing they're not real, it started to even still affect you yeah. in terms of the idea of comparisons and influences and things Shake of that nature. Shake your trust in the world. Oh, yeah. And, I w and at the time, I was single and I was seeing all these couples and I was just like, I'm going to be a single loser for the rest of my life. Like, that's how I was feeling. And, and just... Be, sitting on Instagram and scrolling all day, it really starts to make you anxious. And Okay, so then you have it. So here you have it. And this is coming from someone on the inside. So just imagine you are truly an Instagram expert mm -hmm. for all intensive purposes. And you are being starting to, you're starting to get affected by the radiation Absorb it. Yeah. of yeah. the Instagram. So now take the average adolescent yeah. 18 year old without the knowledge you have, without the awareness that you have, and you literally, and you have acne and you are overweight or you're 37 and your friends are married and mm -hmm. you're getting close to, and you just see what, how that is start. And so it makes sense. And we're going to, this, the second half of it, we're going to talk about the psychology of it, but yeah, it makes sense that this is starting to erode at your self-esteem. Yeah. And as a result, people are on more medication, they're vaping, yes. they're suicidal, um, and so on and so forth. Um, then I want to talk about influencers, mm -hmm. right? So, so that's one thing. The idea that there's managers managing accounts, aka creating a persona. Then there's this whole world of influencers. And influencers in the sense that they are these people that go and get procedures. And I'm going to stick to plastic surgery right now. And they go get lips done or... And then there's always this like, thanks, Julie, at like Dr. Dr. Schmo's office. Yeah. And then he's like, a shout out to our lovely model, uh, 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 Katarina, blah, 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 at so-and-so. So tell me a little about that world so people understand how that works. When we come back. Oh, I just got shut down. Okay. Yeah, no, because it's because we get, a, yeah, we there, get deep a lot into to, it. Oh, okay. So then I guess into. when I come back. Yeah, well, we've got to take a break on plastic surgery uncensored because a lot of people are anxious now. Their YOLO's getting in the way of their FOMO. So let's just <laughs> let's take a break and come back. We're back with plastic surgery uncensored. Dr. Roddy Raban here in Beverly Hills. 
board certified plastic surgeon. I'm his co-host Monique Marvez, and we have Haley Greenberg. Now I'm just gonna, you're an expert at behind the scenes social media image building, brand creation. It's it boggles the minds. So we left because I I was like mid sentence, yeah. but I want you to talk about influencers. Yeah. This concept of influencers, where it was, where it is, where it's going and and what what you what sort of your take on it. So I would say the influencer started with the Kardashians. I know you guys have a thing with the Kardashians. I happen to really love the Kardashians. They're very That's like this is like right here when you're a Democrat or a Republican. Wow. It's like divide. It's like we could get into a political debate about okay, this. Okay, well, but we're gonna we're gonna escape go over that. Yeah, okay. okay. And what do you love about them? It's not that well Oh, we can't talk about we that. We can't no, even no, get into it. No, it's a whole other Let's show. Let's just say as a millennial, I grew up watching them and coming from a neurotic Jewish family that's all in each other's business, I can really relate to their family. Understood. That's it. Okay. So let's just say that they were the first influencers on Instagram. And then all these pe- all these girls, you know, wanted to look like Kylie, Kim. They were the two biggest at the time. And they started getting offers from brands and at the time before any algorithm, you were able to grow your account very fast. And so over, you know, a small period of time, these really pretty girls were getting millions of followers. And then brands would come to them and say, hey, I have this product. Will you promote it? And here we are in 2020. And every everyone and their mother is an influencer. Right. So so this pretty girl thing that so my my experience has been that if you're not in a bikini and near naked, mm-hmm. you're not going to have a million followers. Because to, to, to the reality is, no. if you're a pretty girl, which there are hundreds and thousands of them globally, and yeah. you're walking the streets of Milan with a cup of coffee, and you're like, in the moment, no one gives a shit. No. So w- what really it is, is it's soft porn. Right. And the soft and, porn and draws... To, the- Everyone has such bad ADD now, and especially with content being so saturated on Instagram at this point, when you're scrolling through your feed, you're going to, what's going to catch your attention is a half naked girl. And that's just the truth of it. And so. So then that's how the influencer began. Yeah. And then talk to me about plastic surgery and influencers, because there's plastic, you know, influencers in every, you know, Turbo T and um, uh, Fashion Nova, all that's irrelevant to me. What's relevant is that I want to go get my lips injected. And then I saw my favorite, you know, uh, model that I follow. And she was at Dr. Show and Show's office. Like, he must be good. So I have a personal experience. There is a doctor. And actually, I don't even know if... He's a real doctor in Beverly Hills because he has so many lawsuits, which I found out after. But I was told that Kylie Jenner went to him for her lips back in 2014, the first time she did it. So I was like, okay, this is the guy I'm going to to do my lips. I ended up waiting in his waiting room for five hours. Finally, when I was brought in, he I don't know what he did to my lips, but then he started injecting my nose no joke, 20 times. I have no idea what he without, even put in. Without consent? Without. I told him I, I had previously gotten a nose job. I was unhappy with the results. And I was like, maybe you can do something to make it more symmetrical. 20 injections later. I don't know what happened. Um, then I check out. It come, He said that the injections in the nose were free, but that the lips were $4,500. And what? so I am literally 23 years old and I have now spent $4,500. Now knowing what you know it costs to get your lips filled, I'm just like, I am an idiot. And I, I just didn't know better. But because he had a million followers and Kylie Jenner was going to him, even though I have now learned that he pays celebrities so the right there, go to his office. Okay, so what that is is you talked about both ends of the influencer, uh, uh, um, influencer sort of the, the both ends of the 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 uh, teeter totter. The one end of it is the consumer who is following the influencer, and the other end is the influencer who is being paid mm-hmm. to influence. So if you, as as some of you may not may know, most of you probably don't. Instagram, because that process of influencers has destroyed the credibility of Instagram amongst a million other things. Beyond. So Instagram, not because they're benevolent or care about you, but because they want to save their brand, which is save Instagram's credibility, have started to force influencers to have to at least tell you that they're influenced by getting paid. 
So if you are getting paid by Fashion Nova or Dr. Joe Schmo, you need to say it. Who knows whether or not they'll regulate and that. I've worked with a lot of influencer pages. And let me tell you, a lot of them aren't even being paid. They're just getting free shit. And then they're pretending they're going on and saying, use my discount code and acting like there's something that they aren't. But most of these girls are just getting free products. Perfect. So that's even more explained. So you go in, you're a pretty girl. You have 30,000 followers because you're in a bikini every mm-hmm. other photo. Dr. So, 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 so-and-so is slow. He call, reaches out to you or you reach out to him, one or the other, because I've had oh. no less than 100 of these women reach out to me like, oh, I love your nose jobs. Oh, I love your breast dogs. Could we collaborate? Collab. Collab what? I know. I, I never I understand. understand. I'm like, collaborate how? What What do you... What do you... So so they reach out. The girl comes in. She gets her free, free lips done. In exchange, she'll do a shout out. If she's really popular, she'll put out a couple of, you know, stories or whatever. If she's really, really got real followers, he'll give her a, a something to post. And then, 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 then there's... The wake, the wake is all the other people who follow in because they love her and they think she's really sweet. And they're usually young. And as you were 20 something, early 20s, 20s. usually you don't see a 40 year old girl going in because, you know, Katerina at whatever went down. But there's a lot of young girls, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, who don't have a lot of money that go in and get sucked into this thing. So the whole influencer ideology is so jacked up it's so jacked up it's so overly saturated and i feel like we're getting to this turning point and i i keep referring it to like we're getting into a new decade of the 2020s and i just think that it's gonna go maybe in the opposite direction and i feel like people are starting to become more aware maybe not as much as like i feel like people are aware but that people are kind of going in the opposite direction now and almost like needing a digital detox and becoming more aware that a lot of things are fake. But there's a large majority of people that do not know. Okay, so that segues me perfect. So you are not, you said you had your nose done. So tell me, because when you went to go hit plastic surgery, Mm -hmm. and you'll talk about it, Mm -hmm. you then had to figure out how to actually figure out how to get plastic surgery done. Because the overwhelming majority of people are using social media. Yeah. Right. But we just we just finished 30 minutes of saying that that's just full of shit. Yeah. So how does one actually go and figure it out? So you actually had to go another route than the route that you worked it. Yeah. So, well, the first plastic surgery I got when was when I was 15 and I got a nose job. OK. And how did you find that guy? Um, He was like top rated. I, my mom found him, honestly. Mom. So that's 15. Your mom finds it. There's no question. Yeah, about like that. Okay. basically I turned 13, got bit by the Jewish bat and all of a sudden had the world's biggest nose. And I was like, I am not living like this. And then got a nose job. Right. And it, you know, it's a rite of passage. It's like yeah. bat mitzvah, nose job. It's <laughs> exactly. All good. It's got a rite of passage. Then my face changed and I graduated college. And then I was like, I need a revision. It's just nothing. It's not working for me. And I didn't do my homework at all. And I went to someone who didn't specialize in rhinoplasty. I got the second revision. I was really unhappy with it. Then I'm out in LA. A couple years later, I'm hardcore doing my research. And I ended up finding another great rhinoplasty expert in Beverly Hills who did my third revision. And he did as good of a job as he can do because the more revisions you get course, the less very difficult the less likely it's going to be symmetrical so i have my nose today then a couple years later um i had decided that i wanted to get a breast augmentation which brought me to dr Raban. and basically i was like I am doing my research. My sister got her boobs done with another doctor and she was not happy with it. And I was not about to experience what she went through. And you guys are very close, right? Very close. You guys are like two peas in a pod. So it's interesting because off this, this, I I love to interject because I think these are important points. Mm -hmm. Just because your best friend, your sister, your twin does something, you don't need to follow in suit. Have your own independent analysis. So when you want to get your breast done or your nose done and you are in a clan of girls, that's great that your girlfriends had their breasts done, but you need to do your own independent analysis. And if you end up where your girlfriends went, great. Yeah. But if you don't, you don't. Yeah, exactly. And I would say don't listen to your friends. I mean, listen to them, but 
do your homework also. So what I ended up doing, obviously everyone, you know, goes into Google, best plastic surgeon. And in the last episode, I, I forgot who was on, said they did the same thing. And your name came up and it was on Real Self. And I just started watching videos of you and you said something um, in the video that really, you know, struck a chord with me was that it was something about uh, social media, but it was like, just because the plastic surgeon has a hundred thousand followers does not mean they are the best plastic surgeon. It just means that they have a good social media manager. Interesting. That triggered you. That triggered <laughs> me. And what I was like, um, yes, absolutely. And then I started obviously watching more of your videos and then I went on your website. I was looking at all your before and afters. I went to your Instagram and just, you know, was going through everything there. And I was obviously looking for the signs that I knew that things could have been retouched. Which, but they, which, which everyone is the last part of our segment is how do I tell? We're going to get to that, but yeah. keep going. Inside job. <laughs> yeah. And um, so then I ended up, you know, deciding I didn't have a consultation with anyone else but you i just trusted i i loved your work and you know we met and i just felt like i was in good hands and i couldn't be happier with you know my breast augmentation okay, monique monique's like was, taking no i've never actually looked at her shimbolskis but she's well, she, you know <laughs> i'm you're, you're, I, she's very subtle well and you're I'm gonna subtle and they're very nice and i'm not wearing a bra and um you know very people nice. don't really know and i'm i'm a very petite person so i was really nervous that it was gonna look fake and i just mm -mm. i didn't want to make a mistake in terms like with my nose i was just like anything's better than my nose at in the beginning but with when it came to my my boobs i was like i cannot have these fake high profile whatever right, i really right. did my research and you hit on dual plane. And then I started researching. I was like, I have to do the dual plane technique. And then. So, so I think what I would help, let me help kind of distill it for people, because I think over and over and over and over again, whether whatever podcast episode we do, the idea is what is homework? When people say, I got to go do my homework. What is it? The answer is there is no single method of finding out whether or not your surgeon is going to be good or not. It is the sum total of taking all the parts and making sure there is a cohesive and consistent story. What does that mean? If you go to Instagram and all of a sudden this guy's got 100,000 followers and all this great stuff and the guy walks on water and then you stop there, you're an idiot. Mm -hmm. and, but if you go to their website and their website somehow doesn't match, that tells you something's not right. Right. Yeah, then you go look at their videos. If they don't have videos, that's not right. No. Then you go look at their reviews and you read all of them. Yeah. And you, if they're all like, he's amazing. He walks on water. He's the best. They're not real. Yeah. They need to be full of information. And then on the third day I had swelling, but the swelling wasn't so bad. Da, da, da. So what it is, is reviews don't work because they can be faked. Photos don't work because they can be faked. Instagram, as we know, can be faked. Websites are all a bunch of shit you write yourself. So, well, it's all fake. Not if you put all of it together. It's the idea of going on a date with someone and expecting to know if they're really a wonderful person on one or two dates. But you can lie on one or two dates, but you Tomorrow, cannot lie yeah. forever. And yeah. after a long period of time, when you travel with them and you go to movies with them and you go to parties with them, they're going to show their true color. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to do homework, homework means digging and really going through a lot of different sources and making sure that at the end, they all they all say the same message. Exactly. I I almost was like manic when I was doing my research and I I was looking at other plastic surgeons also and I was looking at, you know, the other ones that were highly rated in Beverly Hills and and it just the work wasn't adding up to what I thought it should be. Right. And so that's where the, and yours. so that's where the particularness well, we, comes in. When we started this first of all, education you know, I mean, forget you're an image person, but on top of that, when you're saying a consistent story, cosmetic surgeon versus plastic surgeon, board certified oh, versus absolutely all, all of that stuff. Right, I mean, let's right. get we, back to actual basics. Yeah, I mean, well, the, yeah. the basics. We we jumped ahead, assuming that that was understood. But of course, where did your doctor go to school? Not that that only in and of itself matters. Is he a plastic surgeon? Is he a cosmetic surgeon? Is he board certified? Those things are just like the fundamentals or of the, the language. Repeating. But I think, but I do think that it's important, and you touched on it, that homework is about about going down a lot of rabbit holes. Oh yeah, and not just one, which would be Instagram. 
And I'm going to segue into, I think, what I think is probably one of the most important parts of this, which is, okay, so I'm just a young person. And I hate to use the word young because, as I said to you, my mom's on Instagram and she's 80. So yeah. I'm a person who's on Instagram and I want to use Instagram, which I just finished telling you, you should not. But you don't want to listen. You want to go for it. Go ahead. And I want to use Instagram. And how do I tell what's real and what's not? How do I tell if likes are real? How do I tell if images are real? How do I tell if this person is who they say they should? So what, what are you, tell me some of the things that you can. Some of the things you can do. Uh, first of all, if someone has 100,000 followers, but they're only getting 100 likes, red flag. Okay, so that means that the likes, which theoretically can be manipulated, but if the likes don't correlate. To if the, the ratio isn't matching up, like. Right, because if you have 100,000 followers and it's about a 4% or 5% exposure, you should be getting about 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 likes, correct? Maybe a couple years ago. Now it's lower, especially today, it will be lower. But if you're getting under 1,000 likes, I would say red flag. At this point in Instagram, you cannot use any third-party app or maybe there are some that people are getting away with, and that means purchasing likes on a third-party app. So back up. So what happens, there's, let's let's talk about this for a second because it's very important. We had, it's like, it's, like, it's like before Christ and after Christ, BC mm -hmm. and AD. Okay, so before was the old school, which let's just say for the time being, prior to last month. I'm just going to make up a, a yeah. statement. Prior to last month, you could buy likes. You could use third-party softwares to manipulate things. Wow. You could buy views and you could buy followers. Mm -hmm. Instagram, again, not because they care about you, but because they're trying to preserve their brand, finally figured out that this has gotten out of hand and that it's losing credibility. So now what they've done is they've said, they've, they've said that they've restricted the number of views and likes that you will see. And they make it sound like is they're trying to make it so that you don't people don't do it for the likes, but they're trying to do it is so that that they preserve the authenticity of Instagram. But nonetheless, well, not to mention that they have already taken away the like count in Canada, in Australia, and in a couple other countries, and it's going to happen in the U.S. It's just a matter of when. I got uh, on one of my accounts. I got you are being tested, and nobody's likes were showing up, which I think is a good thing. It's a I, I don't know. It has its benefits and, you know, the downside also. But it's probably going to die down because what's the point? The it, likes well, create the, oxytocin. The point is, is that they want Instagram to become what it started as, which is creative content. So now I've had to completely switch what I'm doing, which was being a, com a compulsive growth hacker to now pumping out really creative videos and photography and I've had to get all this new equipment and now it's actually amazing for me because I can go back to my passion of photography right and, and it was it was and I think it requires that the stuff that you're putting out has some merit it has because, to have merit yeah because people are you 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 can't use the images to manipulate anymore by buying the likes within tells the person who's 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 naive that this is something that's good like you just have to decide for yourself if you like it. In other words, now you look at an image and you're like, hmm, do I or don't I like it? As I opposed- think an image is still external validation. How no, no, are you no. gonna know if people like your guitar strumming? No, 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 we're not like talking it. about the person who's using, I'm talking about the person who's viewing, not the person who's, ex who's putting out. Right. So I'm a young girl and I'm looking at something and I look at a, a dress and I have to actually decide for myself right. if I like that dress. Mm -hmm. Whereas before I would look at the dress, I'd see how many people liked it. And I'd be like, wow, 100,000 people liked it. This is a really nice dress. Yeah. You follow? I'm, I'm not sure that I do. They're eliminating the, when you go to- Other people can't see how many likes you no. get. No. Only you can. Internally, you will be able oh, to. Oh, you can In see. Canada, right now, internally, each person's, they can see their own amount of likes, but the outside people you cannot oh, see their that's likes. nice. Now that I think is brilliant. Like and that. it helps. And this goes into the mental health aspect is that people are so, uh, I don't even know what the word, I, I, they're so anxiety driven by the amount of likes they're getting. And it's causing this like epidemic of mental well, health. I, I, I'm going to segue. Do you think that this is tying into the fact that now all of these oxycodone and the Sackler family and the fact that they're sort of tacitly admitting, yeah, we might have had something to do with this horrible opiate crisis. Do you think that, that Instagram is potentially trying to get ahead of the game of the fact that they're creating at some point, somebody's going to sue and say, my kid committed suicide because they I were mean, addicted. I, don't, I don't, it's not, it's, I mean, social, I, I think it's social media 
at the forefront of but which Instagram is, is the I, highest I think it's, offender. It, it's so much more of greed that this new guy, Adam Masari, took over Instagram. He had previously taken over Facebook, which is when everyone kind of like dropped off Facebook and it just wasn't as popular anymore. He's doing the same thing. He wants people to put money into Instagram now. So if you want your posts to reach a high amount of your following, you have to spend a decent amount of money monetizing and it's, it. it's monetizing oh, boost, it's boost really more post. for greed. it's all about boost your post it's all about boosting and Got don't it. and i'm really against that also because you know my brother and I, on his 15 million follower page he used to have to put in a thousand dollars a day and it's just it, it doesn't and, it, and they're your followers the thing that the thing that's crazy about that is and we digress and we'll go back because i want to yeah. end on the whole psychology of it yeah. but the thing about it that's as crazy about it is they create a platform. You create content for them for free. You, you, your brother, me, we all put content on there. We create a community. The community says on their own volition, assuming they're not fake, that I like Dr. Raban's content. So I have, let's say, 15,000 followers. And then they restrict who can see it. And I have to now pay for you who's agreed that you and, want to see it to see it. And every month that you goes by... That? The reach of what where your post will go into your audience gets lower and lower and lower. So, you know, last month you may have been getting 500 likes on a photo. And then this month you're probably getting 300 and they just keep cutting and it down. What that means by likes, it doesn't mean that people like it or not. It means exposure. It just means no, your, your brand is being seen. How many people it's reaching. It's yeah. more when you look at the insights, when you see how how much it reached, but anyway. So we go back to the last part, which I want to wrap things up on, is the psychology of it and what it's really doing. At the end of the day, all of this, all of it, everything we said ties down to self, people's self-image, people's self-worth, people's happiness, mm -hmm. and whether that's vis-a-vis -vis the anxiety that they create because they're not getting likes, whether or not because they're doing FOMO, and they're comparing their lives to other people. Whether this is it's, funny to me, I'm sorry. You find it funny because of the way it sounds, but fear well, of Well, I'm not involved in it. I'm genuine. I'm like yeah. witness no. protection comedian. Yeah. I have like 4,000 Instagram No, followers. no, no, no. FOMO is fear of missing out. Yeah, I don't is, care. No, but uh, if you, no, but if you are, if you're a friend, if all your friends, if all your friends are on a vacation and you're not there, you're 57 year old I mean, comedian. Yeah. Listen, I, I don't care less. either. I love being alone in my Nevertheless, room. nevertheless. Um, but all of this is really the true sadness. Yeah. Because- and it does not apply. We always like to say it, it applies to young people and millennials. This happens to 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds, mm -hmm. Sure. No, no, I see Sometimes people Sometimes even there. at a higher level of the women in their 40s, it's more it's more sad in, in some ways. And then th it, it's different with each age group. Well, you because expect it, it with the kids. You, well, expect, you expect it. it with then, adolescents. Yeah, but then I've dealt with, you know, mother influencers who I'm like, this is sad. Yeah. So, I mean, the key takeaway is unfortunately, <laughs> unless you have an incredible, incredible degree of awareness, which most people don't No. which would be like, I can look at these images and I can still not be affected. The overwhelming majority of humans are going to look at images and be affected. And, and, and I think the answer to all of it is you have to unplug. Just like if I you're saw an my neighbor's butt last night and it really, I was like, I don't need to, on your Insta, on Instagram? Yes, she's well, very attractive. We need to end on that. She's I a mean, beautiful Mexican girl, and we're friends, and she posted on Instagram Why do you in think she, thong. I'll end on that. Why do you think she posted her ass? <laughs> it's it's, it's I'll lovely. I'll tell you, it's beautiful. Attention. Attention. And and this is to what I- feel wanted and needed and appreciated and valued. It was all sparkly. <laughs> um, <laughs> what I always say to people, and I've been in therapy for seven years now, so I've really been working on myself. And that's why the whole FOMO thing and the comparing, you, you really have to, you know, plastic surge, surgery is an outside job, but you really have to, you know, work on your insides Absolutely. first. And, and, and there's going to be people that if you never work on your insides and what's actually going on internally, you're just going to keep thinking that getting more Botox, more fillers, more whatever procedures is going to fix all your problems, but it's not. You're just going to become obsessed and keep getting, thinking you need more and more and more. But the truth is, and this is the truth, and, and I believe it, is that everyone, every person is an insecure narcissist. And, and it goes both ways. Like there are many aspects of my person personality that are insecure. And then 
the part of me that posts me in a bikini, I'm like, look at me, look at me. I have this hot bod. And that's the narcissist side of me. And I just think that everyone has both sides and Instagram plays into both of those. So you post your bikini shot and it's not getting the likes you want. So, you know, your dopamine and levels aren't like- going crazy. And then you're like, oh my God, should I delete this picture? Nobody thinks it's good. And then it go- there's so you many You can delete cycles. pictures? Yeah. Oh, oh man! I oh God! On that. The, and there's but a I, lot. I definitely think this is a huge current epidemic. I oh, think, it is. I think the reality is that we have to just have the dialogue, like everything else. And the more of it you speak about, the more people become aware. The more people become aware, the more they check themselves, and overall, you know, find themselves to a place that's a little bit happier. We're really, really grateful that you came. I think. Absolutely. I think. Really I think. Happy peop- I think come. people are going to really appreciate your transparency of sharing the inside because you don't have to yeah. you know and i think that we need more people who will tell the truth and that's what this whole show is about it's transparency so thanks for coming thank you for having me and, and uh, we're, we're gonna wrap it up yeah i'm gonna take us out uh thank you for listening to this episode of plastic surgery uncensored with dr Roddy Raban, board certified plastic surgeon. That is the complete truth. You can see it. We have paperwork. And uh, Haley Greenberg, who is a master manipulator who's now taken on the straight life and uh, cares what's on the inside. And your co-host is Monique Marvez. Thanks for listening.